Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for tuning in to another episode of Nerd Up. This week, I got Dalton Anthony. Yo. Lisa Gray. Yes. Lindsay Wolfgang. I'm sorry I'm nasally this week. <laughs> she is very nasally, but she's here. We have a four-man cast for the first time on Nerd Up in weeks. And I'm your host, Jesse Kimball. Yeah, I think we went from uh, a couple of weeks ago, we had a two-man cast. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm sorry. Though, uh, according to the internet, best <laughs> oh my episode God. of Podzilla 1985 ever. <laughs> Ace and the, I just knocked it out of the you park. You were the worst humans. <laughs> um, sounds like we were the best. Yeah, that's what I'm hearing yeah. from the internet. From Zane. The internet. That's, yeah, that's all that matters. <laughs> You're going to tell me Zane's opinion doesn't matter? No, it does. It's I'm not just important. Saying, wow. Jeez. Jesse, what's on, what's on the docket for tonight? <sighs> he listens to the pre-show. He knows how I feel about him. Mm-hmm. That right, Johnny so guy, though. Netflix has officially canceled Punisher and Jessica Jones, to the surprise of uh, most, or not most people. Uh, apparently, there were a couple of people that were surprised about it. One, uh, Marshall Eminem Mathers. Wait, that's not his real name. Yeah, Marshall no, Mathers. You got it. Okay, cool. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> you hold on, that the didn't Eminem's sound right. not his like Christian middle name, but yeah, you got it. No, yeah, the, you you do the the quotes around like for the nickname in the middle, like that's how. You yeah, do yeah that. you got it. Yeah, no, you're fine. I'm just saying. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, no, he, he tweeted about it like Netflix is messing up for canceling Punisher, mm-hmm. uh, right. which cracked me up. Then John Barenthal, the guy that plays the Punisher, <laughs> uh, tweeted back like, "Thanks for watching, man. You're <laughs> like, the best. You're the best." <laughs> you're, 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 <laughs> and he like put the skull in the, the yeah. tweet. Like that made me happy. Yeah. Um, which I wonder if like Eminem actually watched season two of Punisher yet? Because I mean, I feel like he would enjoy it. Yeah, he's gonna see true. it and tweet it and just be like, "This was a big steaming pile of word I can't say on this show." He just really liked the free. Yeah, he just really really liked the first season. And then John Barathol's like, "Yeah, I agree, man. Thanks for watching." <laughs> God, season two could have been so good. Yeah, and it just wasn't. Like I'm real bummed that I didn't enjoy that. Uh, but either way, Jessica Jones season three is still coming, and I'm still really, really excited about that. Also, like the number of people, and I, 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 I Asa pointed out, like, and he's right. The uh, the number of people that think that Netflix is responsible for the cancellation of these shows, no, nope. you're stupid, blows my mind a little bit. But then Asa pointed out, like, every single news article talks about like Netflix is canceling. Yeah, them. the headline of every single one of those stories that you've seen is Netflix cancels. So yeah. if you Marvel because, property yes, here. they are canceling it, but there are reasons. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Which, granted, we still don't know what they are. We, you know, it's it, like, just... We're, we're 99.998% certain it's that Disney, it's Disney. Disney Fox deal. And now yeah. that they're starting their streaming service that... They don't want they don't want to play with Netflix anymore, because why would they? Because that, mm-hmm. that was the original plan. Like, uh, Disney was just going to use Netflix's platform for all of their stuff, mm-hmm. which is why we still get, like, you know, the most recent Disney movies on Netflix and the Marvel Netflix series. Which isn't... And didn't they say, like, Infinity War is going to be the last MCU movie yes. to go on Netflix. I believe that is correct. Or well, no, it wasn't Infinity Wars. Ant Man and Wasp. Ant Man Wasp. Because yeah, okay, yeah. it's yeah. on there already. Yes, that's right. Yep. Uh, oh crap! I forgot to bring Ant Man for you. That's fine. Uh, I'll remember it one day. Anyway, hopefully before they take Ant Man. I'll Wasp remind on you on Thursday. That's a good plan. Uh, so yeah, they. Uh, so it. Net, Disney is almost certainly responsible for this this cancellation. Yeah. And uh, like Disney is, I don't know how exactly they've managed to. Like, make the media think that it's Netflix's fault, but it's brilliant marketing on their part because, like, Netflix has taken a whole lot of heat for canceling these shows, and they haven't, I guess, good on them, they haven't, like, just publicized, like, you realize that it was Disney, right? <laughs> like, Disney took their toys away. They didn't want to play with us anymore. <laughs> <laughs> they said, screw you guys, I'm going home. Yeah, no, they, they took... They, Mom's not making me share with you anymore. <laughs> they got picked last for basketball, so they just took their ball and went home. Like that. That's why I always pick the kid with the ball first. Right. Keep him happy. <laughs> the he'll leave and he'll take his well, ball with be, him. And to be fair, I feel like Disney at, understood. Like now that they have figured out, like, oh, well, everybody has a streaming service. Who are we? Oh, they'll pay for ours. There's no reason to share. <sighs> and they write. Yeah. And again. So, yeah. like, I can't really, like, yeah, it sucks that there's going to be yet another streaming service thing that I'm going to have to, like, maintain a password for. Mm-hmm. But... Like, I get it. Yeah, like, don't get me wrong. Like, I understand, like, why Disney's made this move, and, like, it makes sense and everything. It's just, like, the fact that Netflix is the one taking the heat for it is what bugs me. Yeah. Yeah, because that's it's not. Fair. Yeah, it's not yeah. Netflix's fault that mm-hmm. Disney doesn't want to play, like, doesn't want to share their toys. Like, yeah. Anyway, please stop bashing Netflix for canceling these shows, guys. Like, bash, bash them for all of the other shows that they take off. Right, like the other shows, they they lose their like rights to. Like removing Ghostbusters. Else. Yeah, which again, oh, those that are means all... Cody will never see it now. <laughs> I know, but again, like those are all just 
like all those Fox shows like American Dad and Brooklyn Nine-Nine, yep. stuff like that, that's all because Fox holds a stake in Hulu. Yeah. Yep. So why would we... Why would you share? Right, yeah. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Though, and it's like, all those other shows and movies and studios like, oh, well, we we could just have this. We could do our own one. Though now that NBC has Brooklyn Nine-Nine, that might hit Netflix again. That uh, would be nice. That I haven't seen any nice. of the new season. Oh, it's so good. I've been really enjoying it. Uh, but anyway, yeah, it... Netflix is not responsible for this. Please don't. That you can give them crap about their price hikes, you can give them crap about their original programming, but like this is not, this is not Netflix's no. this fault. This one's out of their hands. Yeah, uh, just go watch Umbrella Academy and enjoy that. <laughs> that show is pretty solid. <laughs> like I actually really enjoy that. Uh, all right, <clears throat> Scott Lobdell is uh, working on an Odin movie. This is the guy that brought us uh, Happy Death Day. Uh, Odin is a comic book, like this specific version of Odin anyway, comic book about a dog named Odin who goes on a revenge killing spree uh, for the against the people that killed his owner. So basically think of it like a reverse John Wick. That's so weird. Right? Sounds awesome. Not going to lie. Especially because when you it. say Odin movie, I'm like, okay, so like Thor prequel? <laughs> right. Yeah, they thought about that. I was like, no, I need to really specify I mean, if they got quick. If they got Anthony Hopkins, that would be pretty cool. Um, what this is is essentially it's just Dexter, but a dog. Yeah, yeah. kind of. Oh, that poor kitty. That poor kitty. But it gets <laughs> superpowers, so it's fine. It's angry superpowers. So angry superpowers. <laughs> Dexter is the uh, the Red Lantern cat from DC Comics, for those oh, okay. uh, that are unaware. And his backstory is fairly heartbreaking. tragic. Aww. Heartbreaking. That poor old lady. Mm-hmm. Poor Dexter. <laughs> <laughs> He gets so angry about his owner being killed that he is granted a red lantern ring. Wow. That he then uses to murder the people who killed his the per, the, the woman who saved him from the streets. Yep. Huh. Cuz it was like basically a feral cat that then like is totally abused by everything and everyone is eventually brought in and loved for the first time and then that lady's brutally murdered. Oh. And then Dexter brutally <laughs> murders them in return. Poor gets a, yeah, gets a red lantern ring. And then becomes Atrocitus' <laughs> sidekick in Injustice 2. Yep. Aww. Yeah, no, he just goes and chills with Atrocitus. And Atrocitus is like, <laughs> use an angry kitty cat. <laughs> I like <laughs> you. Here you go. become best friends? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then they go on space adventures. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Murdering people. I want so deadly kitty to go on space adventures with me as long as we're cool right yeah you got to be cool with the kitty because uh, it will murder you in your sleep otherwise <laughs> no so dexter it, would do it very much do it while your eyes are off. he would make you watch does, yeah does odin ha- is it like any sort of supernatural or like super powered thing or is it just a dog that goes around like mauling people i do not know i have to believe that it's some kind of supernatural stuff uh or something like that i can't i don't i don't think it's gonna be like cujo uh, with just See, like but it could gets... be, because if it is like John Wick, then it's just going straight for the throat. That's, yeah, that's fair. Yeah, just throat chomps for everybody. <laughs> so, yeah, no, I don't know much about the, the plot line other than that, so I don't know if there's any magic or anything like that. Is it going like to be that. in the John Wick universe? Did we get that epic team-up movie? <laughs> yes, John please. Wick and the killer dog? Mm-hmm. Oh, John, John Wick and to, Odin, like he they, has a name. They try, they, they try to kill Odin, but Odin's like, joke's on you. <laughs> <laughs> Have you met my buddy John? <laughs> try killing me, see what happens. All right, uh, so since we're talking about uh, John Wick, we'll go ahead and talk about Kingsman for a second. Um, <laughs> don't look at me like that, Dalton. Uh, Kingsman uh, prequel uh, got pushed back to 2020. Then Matthew Vaughn also confirmed that Kingsman 3 is happening after the prequel. should be hitting in 2021. Which I'm a little bummed that it's not hitting this year. Uh, You're just going to have to rewatch the other two until then. I have <laughs> <laughs> several times. I need. I, I've, tr- I've been trying to show those movies to as many people as I possibly can. All right, uh, Godzilla has. versus Kong. Yeah, and I've succeeded. I've succeeded <laughs> every time. Want to watch Kingsman? Hell yeah, I want to watch Kingsman. Why would I not want to watch I'm Kingsman? Not gonna lie, I almost put it on the other day when I was browsing Hulu. So. I was have on. You watched I was it before. On, yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. I, every time I'm at Best Buy, I'll see the two movie collection for like thirty bucks, and I'm like, that's a hell of a deal every time. <laughs> and I still, I don't remember which scene exactly sold Dalton on the first one. Elton John. Just, it was like the first time Elton John was. No, on. that was in the sequel. Oh, yeah, yeah that's Mark Hamill the was in the, for sure. Mark Hamill was in the first one. Mm. Yeah, was very probably, briefly. Yeah, um, he he didn't make it. Uh, spoiler alert. Sorry, guys. It happens towards the beginning of the movie. Uh, but anyway, no, like the, towards the end of the movie, the fireworks display. I remember like just the grin on Dalton's face during that entire scene. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was like a grin during my match with Justin. Jerk. <laughs> he was so happy just watching yeah. the fireworks mm-hmm. display. 
Oh, it was funny. Anyway, um, so yeah, I'm a little bummed they got pushed back, but whatever. As long as it's a good movie, I'll be it'll, all right. It'll be good. They take, yeah. care, they take care of that universe. They do. Godzilla vs. Kong moves up to March Yay. 2020. So we're getting that a little bit sooner. Which I finally watched Kong Skull Island, the one that it this is going to be based bad. on. I enjoyed it quite a bit. Yeah. Enjoyed it quite a bit. Hmm. Yeah, has anyway. the new, that the Godzilla King of Monsters hasn't come out yet, has no. it? No. Okay. No. Boy, I'm excited for that movie, yes. though. That looks so good. It does. <laughs> so good. Uh, anyway. the All right, so the, Lindsay's going to have to help me with this one because I don't okay. know anything about this one. Uh, the Storyteller. Apparently, it is getting reimagined uh, by Neil Gaiman and the Jim Henson Company. Yeah. So, Storyteller was basically, it was like late 80s, early 90s. I remember being on like Sundays on like PBS, WQLN, like public broadcasting mm-hmm. type stuff. And it's just basically a Henson like fairy tale type deal. You have the storyteller lives in his house with his dog, and each episode he tells a different story. And oh. the dog is basically like us, like asking questions and and being the listener to it. Well, that's neat. And so. the same thing; it's all different like puppets and stuff through it. the The ones I remember the most there was a. Uh, pirate that ends up making a deal with like demons and like i just remember him in a cave playing cards with all these little like tiny skinny red devils that were just really cool looking and then there's one of a uh a kid that is helping an inventor of some sorts and they end up having this weird like dragon head thing that like grants wishes it's it's definitely a little off the wall that's kind of um, cool though i think it was only six to eight episodes originally and at one point in time it was on netflix but it's been off of it for a long time fair enough but it's it's worth hunting down on youtube just as something different to see so basically what, we, what we're going to get here is a, uh, a a tv show mm-hmm. uh with a dude telling stories written by neil gaiman with muppets yes sounds cool I, i'm down yeah, yeah. sold yep <laughs> I don't even care if they're from the And it, kids. it very much had more of a labyrinth, dark crystal feel to it. It's a little more darker, gritty, not so much like bright, vibrant colors of our classic Muppet Sesame Street Fraggle Rock. And Neil, that's that's Neil Gaiman's like bread and Niche. butter right there. <laughs> like that's like he's all about the the dark and gritty stories. Uh, so no, yeah, I'm down. I'm sold. All right, uh, thank you, Lindsay, for the. the I knew there. something this week. <laughs> A lot of detail about it. I had because I, oh, no, I, 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 I loved the storyteller, and I had forgotten about it for the longest time mm. until it had popped back up on like Netflix and stuff that way. And I'm pretty sure I binged watched it all in like a day. Nice. You know, this was one of those things. Like I saw, like I saw Jim Henson come. I saw Neil Gaiman first. I was like, "Ooh, something new from Neil Gaiman." I yeah. like to look into this. And then I was like, "Wait, I think Lindsay's going to be." On. And then I saw Jim Henson come. And I was like, "And I think, I bet Lindsay I knows think about Brian this. Henson <laughs> did the voice of the dog that was in it. I could be wrong. Don't quote me on it, but I'm, I'm vaguely remembering that." Fair enough. I'll take your word on it. Uh, okay, next little bit of uh, news here. So WB uh, has uh, set the date for Space Jam Two. Uh, summer I, 2021. I still can't take this seriously. Yeah, yeah, LeBron James going to no. be in Space Jam 2. It'll be fine. So now he just needs like a golf career and then he needs to play AAA baseball. baseball. I was going to say baseball <laughs> career first and then just golf as a hobby. No, <laughs> he never played golf professionally. They're, I mean, gambling no, they're, they're just going to do <laughs> basketball and shoe production. <laughs> yeah, I just, I, he, just, he just really, really wants to be Jordan. So badly. I... Honestly, like, it'll be fine, probably, maybe, I don't know. Or it'll be a dumpster the, fire. Like. It's, it, it just, it doesn't inspire confidence that it legitimately, like, and maybe this was a choice because, like, they're trying to, like, do it kind of ton in cheek, but it legitimately looked just like the poster for the, for first, the first movie. One. That's why I thought just someone just him, photoshopped it. With him photoshopped in. And maybe that's the aesthetic they're going for because it's like, hey, this is, that, the Space Jam is the most 90s thing you can think of. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty true. No, uh, like if there was a if they had a surge sponsorship, like that would just be the <laughs> surge is back. Like that could happen. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so the but so they might just be they they might just be trying to capture that '90s aesthetic of just like the low quality grainy images. Fair enough. And using what looks to be just the same models Model. for Bugs and Lola in the poster too. Now I will say if they have the current voice casts for the Looney Tunes characters, I'll give them props because they're all kind of on their A game right now. 
the new style of Looney Tunes I'm still not a big fan of, mm. but the voices are dead on. So like animation the, style? or Yeah, the okay. animation style of current Looney Tunes is a little weird. It's it's not terrible, but it's just odd to me. I didn't know they were doing it. But a- it's it's been going on for a while, but the voice actors and actresses that they've got covering them are pretty on par with Mel Blanc's original voices. Just, just love that they have to have like multiple voice yeah. actors and actresses to cover one man. When it used to, to be one, one guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, that guy was amazing. Yeah. No, yeah, he, but at the, at the same time, that was a once in a l- multiple lifetimes. Yes. And it was also gender, at a time uh, where just mm-hmm. a handful of people did all those jobs anyways. Mm-hmm. It's true. Yeah. I mean, you go back to a lot of those old cartoons. Like whenever you go to a convention, you'll see like six people and like, oh, they voiced my childhood. Uh huh. I mean, Got yeah, it. it's the same. It's that uh, there was a, a there's a post that ends up on Reddit every six months or so of like the 10 voice actors that have voiced everything. Mm-hmm. And it's always like it's like Phil Lamar mm-hmm. and Billy West and uh-huh. uh, just all like all of those people. Jim yeah. Cummings. Tara Strong, Jim Cummings, yeah. <laughs> yep. Phil Lam- or uh Maurice LaMarche. Marsh. I love him. I love Maurice. <laughs> he was my one of like so we saw him at ICC. I've told this story numerous times before, so I'm not mm-hmm. gonna go into detail of it. But he was one of my favorite parts of that convention, like getting to see Maurice LaMarche in a couple of panels. Mm-hmm. Especially like when he <laughs> Before uh, the panel started. Before the panel started, like some girl in, like towards the front row sneezed. Uh-huh. And really Maurice loud. LaMarche, really, like, like it was silenced a, the room. Yeah, like it was a crazy <laughs> loud sneeze. And Maurice LaMarche uh, pokes his head out from the back uh-huh. and gives us, like, bless you. Like, Morbo, Morbo says, says, bless, bless you. you. <laughs> <laughs> like, in the Morbo voice. And then just That's ducks great. back. Oh, my God. At that point, I was like, this panel is going to be awesome. I just love his and Rob Paulson's banter. Oh, like, Rob just, Paulson just was the one forth. that wasn't there, right? Like he was the one turtle that wasn't there, Asa? Uh, Probably. I think Cause, so. Yeah, because he's the he one was, that's doing Raphael now, right? Or no. Michelangelo no, now? He's, yeah, he's Donatello. Donatello now. He was originally Raph and okay. Donnie, and yes. then he did ADR and yeah. But yeah, but he was Because the, the original voice of Leo was there. Yes, and he Cam was, Clark. Yes. Yeah, all the all of the other three were there. Yeah, the other three but yeah, he were couldn't there. make it because he was like he had like bronchitis and was ordered by doctors to like mm-hmm. not speak for a week. Yeah, yeah. his his podcast got delayed mm-hmm. quite a bit for a little while there. So yeah, like he would have been on that panel too, which would have been awesome. Mm-hmm. But yeah, we got the other three turtles in it, that's and we awesome. found out that uh, the one guy's is just his speaking voice. Yeah, like the original Donatello. That's basically just his voice. <laughs> and uh, yeah, the guys that voice Donatello, Michelangelo, also do Bebop and Rocksteady. Uh huh. Which cracked me up. I did not know that yeah, until they yeah. they started doing those voices at the panel. I was like, "Wait, wait a minute! Just what be- did I learn?" Just because I'm a petty, petty human being, it made me really happy that the guy who voiced Leonardo didn't really like voicing Leonardo. <laughs> <laughs> just be- just for the fact that Leonardo was the lamest of the four, uh-huh. mm-hmm. because Leonardo was the lamest of the four. Don't at me. Isn't yeah, that sure? he, really number was. he he kind of got stuck with a lot of those roles though. Because come like, on, guys, for, we for can me, do it. Like every time that he's on one of the podcasts, I'm like, together. but you were on Robotech. You were mm-hmm. Max. You never bring up Robotech. You make me sad. <laughs> you only talk about Leo. The funny part is, though, like I can pick him out as like random characters on like My Little Ponies and Smurfs and like stupid stuff like that because I've just gotten to that point. I hear voices enough time that I'm like, oh, you were random character A and you were random elf B. <laughs> I do that with a lot of characters, mostly the ones that just get used a whole lot. Like uh-huh. I start recognizing them pretty. Like I can pick Chris Sabat out of anything. Yep. Uh, but he he does have a pretty distinct voice. That's not like a super mm. achievement. Except I didn't know he voiced Vegeta until that panel. Huh. Yeah, Chris Sabat is he's the voice of Piccolo, obviously, yeah. but also Vegeta. Did because they're like the voices of Goku and Vegeta. I'm like, think, wait, that's the voice of Piccolo. Think of all the fun <laughs> facts that we'll be able to cover when we start up Dragon Pod Z. Oh my God, <laughs> Dragon, like, Dragon. Talk. All right. Dragons. On that note, Jay and Silent Bob. <laughs> Uh, Jay and Silent Bob, uh, the reboot. Uh, Kevin Smith says the reboot's going to premiere this fall. Ace way that's, earlier than we thought I it was mean, going to happen. I is that good or bad? See, that's the thing, is like the, how Great. little attention this movie has gotten. Yeah. Because normally this is the type of thing that we, like, oh, we're, we oh we have an, a release date for Clerks, or uh, Clerks 3. God, I wish. If only. <laughs> Jay and Silent Bob reboot. Uh, yeah, uh, we have a release date for the new Jay and Silent Bob movie. I would expect that to be like 2020, 2021. Yeah. <laughs> Granted, this is probably a movie. Boy, that's, that's a mouthful. <laughs> this is probably a movie that's not going to require a whole lot of CG and a lot of post production yeah. type work. Mm. So, I if don't know. If everyone was on just, board and their schedules were open, they may have just been cranking it, it out. out. Yeah. And if Randall wasn't just a little, nope, nope, not going down <laughs> it. Um, I want Clerks now, 3. So, <laughs> so, but it's, I, 
I don't know. I'm I'm happy for I like I really hope that it's good. It's Kevin Smith and it's Jay and Silent Bob, so I don't think he th- Kevin Smith is not someone who will just like crap out a movie because he, can. he feels like he has to or he, like he has any obligation to. Right. He's also very protective of Jay uh, of Jay and yeah, Silent Bob. Especially yeah. those like especially that franchise in particular. So I mean, I'm excited for it. I'm of course going to see it because I I do enjoy Jay and Silent Bob, but I my favorite thing uh, is like my favorite franchise of his is Clerks. Yeah. So mm-hmm. which is fair. No, that's a yeah. phenomenal franchise. Uh, we say franchise. It's two movies. Um, hey. But well, the had cartoon, a cartoon series? series, yeah, sure did, Meg. <laughs> <laughs> but he's made it. All right. So we say franchise because he's literally made an entire living. For himself, his wife, and his child off of two movies. Well, I mean, no, he's had no, other he's, movies. I mean, he's that had are other. He's, he's had a lot of other movies that are also like just as cult classics and yeah, but like those love. are the two. even Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back has a pretty I, intense following. I still love. have a soft spot from All Rats. Oh, oh yeah, no. <laughs> Amy. Yeah, yeah, no, he's done amazing movies, but like it's that movie, like that is the series that like has made him so much money. Well, yeah, I mean, Clerks was his first one. Yeah, uh, and like, then and Clerks that, Two also just blew, kind of blew up. Yeah, and that was awesome. That was an awesome movie. Mm-hmm. Like I really, really liked. Were you liked with Clerks us when too. we saw it in the theaters, and the old couple stayed for about a half hour and then walked out? <laughs> I, so right. like, I want to say I remember that happening, but I don't know because I didn't know you guys when that came out in theaters. Okay, because that, that, that must came have been out, like just before it then. Because that came out in theaters while I was in high school. I guess Bob was with us then. That was almost certain. Because I the still case. hit Audra with the "There's only one return, and it ain't of the king." <laughs> 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 Oh, uh, I think I made a nerd throw up. <laughs> God. Oh. And then oh, really Frodo, funny. nope, can't finish no, that we, line. Yeah. Cannot I just, talk about that I just that know line we were show. sitting in the theater and we see this old couple come in and sit down and we're like, do they do they know what they're watching? And like, sure enough, within the first half hour, they're walking back down the steps and leaving. <laughs> it's like, about a mind. convenience store. It's going to be great, Gladys. <laughs> nope. Uh, Never right. go. Uh, no, I can't do that line either. Nope. Damn. Can't do any of the lines. So yeah, we'll get a away from kevin smith now ezra miller uh he's he's the guy that's gonna play flash maybe someday someday uh, in a flash movie that might happen uh so he he was he in an interview it went past already it's not gonna happen sorry <laughs> so, so he's in an interview <laughs> and uh he's talking about all the delays and everything and about how apparently they are still actively working on the movie they just can't find a script that they're particularly happy with they want this to be a gift a gift to fans so uh i got a i got a quote from that article that i i wanted to read for you guys because i i find this interesting uh we're talking about sparking a whole new universe which is it's not just the dc multiverse it's also the speedster multiverse and the speedsters are the ones who connect all the disparate pieces of it because marvel is just a universe it's just one world and all the same characters in it dc is a multiverse all these different stories with different realities, different characters and versions of characters, and the speedsters are the ones who move through it all. They're like the connecting bridge between all... Cole- That's not the right word he meant for. Uh, okay there? Collaged parts. Boy, Endgame's gonna make him look <laughs> stupid. <laughs> I just, uh, I, I, like, I just in general, like you're talking to comic book fans because this is on a comic book podcast. Like you mm-hmm. realize that DC only has 52 universes, and we only talk about two of them, right? Like, yeah. Marvel, Marvel's the one with the, the infinite ones, multiverse because the other ones are all the really jokey, gimmicky ones. Mm-hmm. Well, technically now there's 53. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. No, they opened up a whole bunch more mm-hmm. beyond <laughs> that because they broke the wall. You see, see walls don't work. Uh. <laughs> That's all I wanted was just to get that out of you. <laughs> uh, it works so, so well. So it's, it's, yeah, no, I mean, boy, he wants speedsters to be important, and I get it. Because it would make him so much money if they were right, important. Yeah, if everyone felt that way, but no one cares. Like Especially, like, we already have Grant like, Gustin as The Flash. Right, who's a fantastic, like, I haven't seen any of the new season. I saw the first three episodes, they were great, and then I got behind, and they took off the the, the last episode, and, uh, and now I'm waiting for Netflix. <laughs> waiting for Netflix. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> or maybe just the DC streaming service. Oh, also, no. sidebar, apparently Doom Patrol is phenomenal. No, oh. and I'm curious about it. Anyway, Don, uh, I need that login info. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I thought you did the free month. <laughs> I did. It's almost over. Oh well, <laughs> sounds like she went to Daddy sooner. 
You're the one that was trying to give it away. Just I you was were desperate for and, it, and then he like <laughs> now now he's withholding. Yeah. yeah, now that now that that's about to dry up, I'm like no. Uh, the so yeah, you I don't can know. Get that login info later. Yeah, I kind of was hoping that his quote would just be like, "Man, I don't know." Like, <laughs> No, instead, I just want to make a movie. <laughs> instead, he's dropping what could be big hints about us doing like a Flashpoint, or mm-hmm. which I guess was one of the original plans, and that might you know give us the new Batman and all this stuff and tie all these just see yeah and that this might dumpster be a, fire of a universe that DC's building together. Because that wouldn't surprise me if they tried to like okay, well now ben, now we've we've lost Affleck, we're, we might be losing uh, Cavill, we're rebooting Suicide Squad, like all of that kind of throwing stuff into. Yeah, because they realize something doesn't work, so, so now they, they have to do it again. So now they're going to try to like retool the Flash movie to be the thing that like, oh well, now these are all in different DC multiverses, and that's the it's the worlds of DC. So then we can, all right, we have our new Batman, we have our new Superman, we're keeping Jason Momoa and uh, Gal Gadot, and then we we'll can bring them in. We'll keep what works and get rid of everything mm-hmm. else. Yes. <laughs> You yeah, know, and like DC's been doing that for years. Like they use the speedsters as their scapegoats for like rewriting Everything. things. Mm-hmm. They like they've done it so many times now where the Flash is just like, all right, well, we need the Flash to screw up royally because uh, we need Batman to have less drama in his life. Uh, or we need to we need to figure out how to make Superman more interesting. So the Flash is going to rewrite part of his origin and. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or there'll be just so this catastrophic event where travel. we kill the one and just bring in a new one. <laughs> Yeah. Who's also already been here forever. He just wanted to be low-key about it. Like, because, oh, they already got me. I'm good. <laughs> I'm going to chill on a farm in Kansas. Because shrug emoji. Like, DC. Who died? <laughs> Uh-oh. Takes off, his, <laughs> takes off his coat like Tom Brady in the fourth quarter of a game. God, now I will play. <laughs> I guess since the other Superman died, I'll just go ahead and jump up. Why were you still here? I don't know. Manhattan couldn't affect me somehow. <laughs> what? Who's Manhattan? <laughs> Escape the blue Don't dog of justice. It. Yeah, no, DC is one of those, like, I love DC comics a lot of the times, but, like. They make you say why Yeah, it's like a lot. And I talk about it with Marvel, where, like, I'll read Marvel stuff, and, like, I'll try to, like, give a synopsis of what's going on, and it sounds like I'm taking crazy pills. <laughs> but then, you know, like, while reading it, it's awesome. But DC, it's like, I'm reading, and I'm like, I'm taking crazy pills. Then I try to describe it, describe it to someone, and I'm like, I can't. I can't do it <laughs> unless it's Batman. Don't Batman make works. Me. <laughs> uh, but anyway, moving on. Like so, now we get, we can actually talk about some comic books here. This portion of our podcast brought to you by our wonderful friends at Villainous Grounds in Perryville, Missouri. Phenomenal human beings, all of them. Check them out, especially for all of your comic book needs. But if you just want to check out and visit, they've got awesome coffee. Uh, Detective Comics One Thousand is going to reveal the new Detective League. So I guess this will be uh, another Justice League, but of detectives. And uh, here, here's the roster, folks. Do they have badges? Ah, uh, they probably, <laughs> probably. We got Detective Chimp, Martian Manhunter, Hawkman and Hawk Girl, Ralph and Sue Dibney. Who? Dibney. Uh, the elongated man and his wife. No clue. Uh, yeah, he he stretches. He's like Plastic Man, but different. Okay. But not a criminal. Right. Okay. Um, but the, and, and also apparently not a borderline god. Yeah, who knows what's <laughs> okay. going on with Plastic yeah. Man at this point. Uh, and then yeah, you've got Sue as his wife. And last time we heard from Sue, she uh, she she got woman in a refrigerator. Well, uh, that's unlucky. It's that's the the comic book thing for like a female character dying to progress like no. a, or a male character story. No. Uh, they just call it that because what was it, Green Lantern? I think. I think it was a Rainer story. Like his girlfriend died, got shoved in a refrigerator. I don't remember. I know the term. I just don't remember where it started. I want to say. I want to say it was Rainer's girlfriend got shoved in a refrigerator, and that started that it. That is an and that's why he's the, ending. And that's why he's the greatest Green Lantern. <laughs> in spite of it. Exactly. You still care. Mm-hmm. Uh, so anyway. Ralph and Sue Dibney. Ralph and Sue Dibney. Yeah, that was the last time we saw Sue. She's back to, like, Ralph and Sue were both dead. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're back to life. For, there for a hot minute, they were, like, dead man-esque. They could, like, take control of bodies. Huh. Uh, but now they're just back to life. But we don't know how or why. Yeah. Uh, at least I don't. I, I've, I've 
If you think too hard, it'll make your head hurt. Yeah, I've also been like out of most DC comics for a while. Like even Batman, I'm like three or four issues behind on now. Oh, is that it? <laughs> yeah, I've been a little better about keeping up than Asa. Um, anyway, so yeah, we got Ralph and Sue Dibney. We've got uh, the question. The reason they brought Ralph Dibney back is obviously because of the Flash TV show. Like it's got to be. Maybe. I don't. Because like that, that's See, I just somehow... don't think those shows do enough to really kind of ch- play with the actual continuity of the comics. No, they don't. I well, didn't realize that they were moving that ne- the needle like that. Which I mean, it's, I'm not saying it's not possible, but because if you look at Marvel, like Iron Man never sold better than after that first movie came out, right? And like it's happened with several other Marvel properties, and so Marvel has pushed you know comic book characters kind of with the movie characters that are coming out. So it mm-hmm. wouldn't surprise me if DC sees that and they're like. People actually did like Elongated Man and Flash. We didn't think it was going to happen, but here we are. Mm-hmm. So now they're they're really pushing. I know they did that with uh, like Black Lightning has been showing up a whole lot more in comics. Um, oh yeah, because thanks he... to that TV show, oh, I thought it was going to be the Saturday Night Live uh, bit. No, I think he was doing stuff with uh, he was doing stuff with Batman too. Yep. Uh, yeah, he was in doing... Detective Comics. Yep. Because uh, I remember seeing that, and then like he's he actually got added to. When's Green Arrow going to show up on Detective Comics? <laughs> yeah, and that's the other thing. Like, oh, oh, so I'll finish this list here. Uh, the question, which awesome, I'm glad to see that guy's He's getting cool, work again. Yeah. Uh, Slam Bradley. Uh, if anybody has heard which of is, that, which is not Dalton's wrestling name, it needs to be now. <laughs> well, no, it's obvious it's copyrighted, <laughs> and I am trying to catch a case. It's oh, it's old enough; it might not be anymore. Um, yeah, no. If anybody's ever heard of Slam Bradley, hit me up on Facebook because I had to look this one up. <laughs> so he can call you a liar. <laughs> yeah, I want to know like, if anybody has heard of Slam Bradley. Uh, he's an old school detective from like some golden age DC comics. Uh, so yeah, it might not be copyrighted anymore. Uh, and uh, I, presumably Batman, like he's in the picture. I don't know if he'll actually be in this league. Uh, I, I feel like they wouldn't put Batman in a fourth league, but I mean, it's Batman. And that's somebody would not surprise books. me. Yeah, no, they wouldn't put Batman in four books. No, no, hold on. He wouldn't. Four leagues. <laughs> He's already in five. <laughs> like five I books. Mean, yeah, no, they wouldn't. They definitely wouldn't. Do, you can't He's oversaturate an, He's Batman. an overachiever. <laughs> They're basically turning him into Wolverine. He does have a superpower now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's multitasking. Yeah. Uh, anyway. So, yeah, that, that's 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 the team. Uh, it's an interesting team. Uh it, I think this very is going to depend greatly on what kind of stories that they want to tell, because all of these characters do legitimately have. Aside from Slam Bradley, because that's another one that I just genuinely do not know. Um, but like Hawkman and Hawk Girl have roots in detective work and like investigative well, journalism, depending on what like life well, that they're in. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, the you're looking right at, because because yeah. te- they do like especially this one where they're constantly just find working to find each other yep. and solving that mystery. And Hawkman is that now like sense. he's been an archaeologist now for years, yeah. which makes a little bit more sense. Uh, the question has always just been a straight up detective. Yes. Detective Chimp also has always just been a pretty much a straight up. His or, name is super, Detective Chimp, but like I mean, supernatural, is he just a legit monkey in a trench coat. Yep. Yeah, he looks okay. like Sherlock. He, he's Holmes. dressed like Sherlock Holmes. But he's a chimp. But he's he a, chimpanzee. a chimpanzee. Okay, fair enough. Um, Martian Manhunter also. Self-explanatory. His, well, I mean, he's got the Manhunter name, but even his... Uh, oh, I'm totally blanking on his human name. John John. John, John Johnson. Or John Jones. John Johns. John it's Johns with a Z. Yeah. Well, the, uh, his name is John Johns, but he goes mm. by like John Jones or John Johns. Or, yeah. It's been different in various places. He's worked he as an investigator. numerous invest- aliases. He's been an investigative See. journalist. He's been a detective. Like they play with his human identity quite All pretty time, regularly. Yeah. Ralph and Sue. Ralph has you know, especially if you're just going by the Flash TV show, if they're just going to bring him in and pretend like it, their past history hasn't really been a thing. Which yeah, you like, know, that's he is a he's very a private investigator. So, like, it makes sense, but if it's, but on the one hand, like, Hawkman going after detective work kind of seems like go, showing up to a water balloon fight with a hand grenade. Yes. Like, a Hawkman and like, Hawkgirl. Yeah, that's just, that's hard overkill for those characters. But then at the same time, like, the Dibneys and the Question trying to do, like, some world saving stuff. It's yeah. like n- nope. Okay, I now mean, you're going I to the hand grenade fight a with a water balloon. Joke about yep. Birdman, attorney at law, but <laughs> I won't. <laughs> Bird. Yeah, no. Like I. No, so I mean, I'm, I probably won't get it, but 
unless it turns out that it's like phenomenal but it's i mean it sounds interesting it, it's going to depend a lot on the creative team which i couldn't find so mm-hmm. i don't know if any like it, it may be a while before we even see this book like they may just be did, inside detective comics i was going to say did they announce it as an ongoing or is it just going to be like at the end of each issue of detective comics there's going to be like a little second or issue? it could just be detective comics moving forward like batman and this crew like they're oh, replacing- it better not be because <laughs> yeah no it wouldn't oh. surprise me if they were replacing the bat family with uh these guys i say the bat family the the gotham the detective, people that have yeah. been on that team uh surprise me if that was the case uh but yeah i guess we'll have to see but anyway uh also from dc the the deceased event that we've been hearing about for a while uh it's uh it's like deceased but it starts with dc get it because you know the comic book really stretching for that one uh they will in fact be about zombies that's been kind of the thought for a while Uh, because they haven't done zombies in a while i think what it happened is someone was talking to bendis in the break room and he talked about marvel zombies and some high level executive just walked by and heard that and said zombie superheroes we could why haven't we done this having no recollection of black uh blackest Night. night yeah which the the best version of zombie superheroes? Yeah, like, and that's somebody that like that's from somebody that enjoyed Marvel zombies. Like mm-hmm. Blackest Night was an awesome storyline. Mm-hmm. Anyway, yeah, uh, so that that's happening. Uh, Greg Capullo released his cover, which is you know just a uh, Batman punching zombie like policeman. Which I'm on board. Like if Greg Capullo's doing the art, there's a thirty percent. I mean, no, that's that's way too low. There's a sixty percent <laughs> chance I'm gonna buy the book just just because, because Capullo his name's on the zombies. Cover. Yeah, yeah. But no. now Capullo drawing zombies, and I liked how like metal for as bat poop insane it was was beautiful. Yes, it was. Yeah, Capullo is. I love Greg Capullo. Mm-hmm. He has a very distinct style. But and it's it's it, it's like uh, if Seth MacFarlane was good. Shots fired. Yeah, I said it. I'm not saying you're wrong. <laughs> shots fired. <laughs> In fairness, like because it does, it's he very much scratches that edge lord the itch. Yes, especially with a book like Metal, where because like even in like the base like Batman book and like Justice League and the other books that he's written that aren't you know super over the top, everyone has just kind of an edge to them. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, so yeah, no, like I did. If if Capullo is doing all the artwork for this and not just the covers, mm-hmm. yeah, no, I'm with Asa. There's at least a sixty percent chance I'm picking up this book just for Capullo. Mm-hmm. Number or number one for sure. Yeah, at the very least. Yeah. Yes. Uh, all right. So with the oh yeah the the last bit of DC news I got Walmart is officially canceling the DC Giants books. Woo. We finally got them to we judge with our wallets. Now we can go all find them on clearance for like three dollars and now buy them. I'm really yes. glad that like everybody else also judged with their wallets too. It's same because this very much could have been one of those things like yeah those three guys on that podcast weren't buying it. Good thing <laughs> everybody else is. No, so and I will say it was a an idea. I don't want to say good or anything like that executed in the idea of where they put it because anytime you found it at walmart it was in like the um trading card section uh-huh up, oh really up, up, that's up, up, where i kept finding I it literally up, shoved never... up by the registers I where literally... pokemon and so baseball like, cards you know are. how yep. like you walk by that section and you're like oh okay cool and then you'll like look at the, like the first 20 feet of that aisle when mm-hmm. it goes like 30 feet deep no, all right, when it, like, it hits Yu-Gi- fifteen to twenty, because yeah. it hits Yu Gi Oh, and after Yu Gi Oh, there's nothing there that I care about. It's like, yeah, well, it's it's like blind that. bag it's, things. It's yeah. in that section, stuff. like actual like baseball cards and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, and that's where it, that's where it was. At least at our Walmart, that's where it was. Never, where most WalMarts were, I only know that because I'm all over the place, and every Walmart I go to, that's where they always were. Yeah, because I've never seen them. Which, granted, I haven't looked in the trading card. Like every once in a while, like if I'm going to Target or something, and it's like right there, I'll oh, take a look and just see them. what I'll see like what sets are out. Yeah, but I don't. I don't actively look anymore because that itch is strong. It's honestly, it's, I don't think I'm strong enough to resist like a trading card, a trading card game that Jesse wants me to play, and the Warhammer when that game comes out. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I can't do it. Yeah, no, it, like, it's probably good for my wallet that they moved him in Target because I haven't played Magic now in a while because Andrew stopped being really interested in it. Mm-hmm. So I guess I could call Ben over. <sighs> oh, uh, don't do that. <laughs> But anyway, yeah, no, like, uh, you know, anytime I go to Target, like, I go to Target for four things, four very specific things mm-hmm. that are only at Target, and I have to walk by those cards every single time, and I'm like, I wonder what they got over here. And they just got a little cup of booster power. <laughs> well, right, oh, oh, look at that. They got a new set out. That's cool. Like, cool. Like, uh, uh, anyway. Um, <laughs> what cards are in the set? <laughs> Unlike whenever uh, I worked at Hastings Dalton, can you buy a box of cards for me? Mm-hmm. Just a box? Yeah, I give you cash. Yeah, booster box. Oh yeah, yeah you always took care. Yeah. Like, you always took care of me. You never <laughs> didn't take care of me. What I'm saying right. is, like, you just don't get me wrong. I would love to just drop 
money it's, on a booster box Pokemon cards, but I just can't bring myself to the, do it. I did it so that we could draft them. Like I, I never wanted to buy them just to, oh, okay, not true. I wanted to open every single <laughs> uh-huh. one of them. But no, I would buy them so that we could like draft them. Because there was two times, there was one time you asked me if I could buy two boxes. Yeah. And I was like, I can't. I'll get fired. It was a set that I was very excited about. The, the boost because the booster box is very much the every time you go into a microtransaction like a loot box type thing where you're buying currency, and it's like, well, you can buy a hundred coins for five dollars, but if you spend a hundred dollars, you get like a hundred extra coins as well. Yeah, twenty percent more the, in coins. Yeah, that's the booster box. Well, because it's because it breaks down and it's cheaper per booster. Right. Yeah, you can see yeah, the the yeah, the booster box is the uh, you spend a hundred dollars and now you get like oh so many characters mm-hmm. you you get you get a thousand loot boxes oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, but now anyway. that I know the game that you were playing, sir, magic. <laughs> <laughs> Not anymore, though. Like I said, it's been a long time. That's I ain't playing it. Uh, anyway, so this next portion of our podcast is brought to you by our wonderful friends Josh and Alan of Press Start to Join. You can find all of their content at ps2jshow.com. And uh, Josh sent me an email. Looks like the exclusive on the, uh, the upcoming uh, History of Gaming episode is going to be right here on Nerd Up. Ooh. You'll get to hear about it here before anywhere else. Ooh. Uh, this month it will be Earth Defense Force. <laughs> oh, that's awesome! It's gonna be a good show. That's a that's a hot franchise. That's one that I'm gonna actually have to listen to because I because like it's such a balls insane franchise. Mm-hmm. Every time I see videos of it, it just looks insane. But I've literally never played one. It has such a it has a ridiculously high or strong cult following. Uh, I one of the one of the podcasts that I listened to, someone was breaking it down, and it essentially like either the newest game or the game that came before it, you end up actually fighting God. <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. Every time you see it, it's just giant ants and spiders crawling over a city, and then it escalates. So <laughs> I'm very intrigued at this development because yeah, I always remember whenever they would release a new Earth Defense Force game, like I wouldn't hear anything about it. Like I would get no marketing materials. Like whenever mm-hmm. I worked at GameStop, nothing about it at all. And then suddenly, like the game releases, and, and boom! I, yeah, I've got like everybody coming and asking for it. And we only got two copies, so like they're <laughs> gone. Like I'm, I'm unfortunately I'm sold out. Who? What is this game? <laughs> <laughs> what are you people talking about? Uh, I don't understand. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, uh, that'll be uh, this coming Wednesday. Uh, they're gonna drop that episode about Earth, Earth Defense Force. Yes, Dalton, that was my foot. I apologize. That's fine. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure you were aware. Uh, so yeah, and and for the future, yeah, Josh is gonna let me know what these uh, what these shows are gonna be, so I can build up a little bit extra hype about them. So yeah, Nerd Woo-hoo! Up exclusive. Find out what's gonna be on those history gaming episodes uh, right here. That's awesome. Yes, it's a good time. All right, uh, Google is unveiling whatever video game project they've been working on uh, coming up at the Game Developer Conference. Mm-hmm. Well, they haven't revealed it. They've just revealed that they're yeah, going they're, to reveal. Right, yeah, that's what I'm saying. At, at, mm-hmm. at that conference, uh, whatever video game project it is that they've been secretly, or not so secretly, I guess, working on uh, for the past few months, they're finally going to give us or give us information about it. Yes. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm definitely definitely interested to know that. Also coming out of the G, uh, the GDC, looking like Microsoft is going to unveil uh, their new consoles. Uh, so we'll finally get to know if they're doing that. You know, stream only system. We got a couple of code names, which were Asa, uh, Anaconda, and Lockhart. <laughs> With Project Scarlet, is there? Uh, I need to know why that broke, Lindsay. <laughs> Sorry, that's just terrible. Did you just hear Anaconda? Like, is that that what got you? It's just terrible. <laughs> I mean, it's a, it's a it's code, code name. name. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, code names often are. Like, they are. Dolphin. Like, yeah. Like, Microsofts about, are always super one. edgy, though. Well, except Lockhart. Uh, yeah, man, 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 man. Why? Because <laughs> why not? But yeah, that's yes. so the code. Yeah, we found the code names got released back or like leaked or whatever back in like December, I think. Um, and so, yeah, now the rumor is that they may actually be unveiling them either as early as GDC or at E3. Right. And then, uh, or vice versa. Cause I think I'm pretty sure GDC is before E3. Yes. Yeah. It should be. Mm-hmm. Cause GDC is in March. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that's and, way before E3. Yep. Um, but yeah, so I mean, both of these are potentially huge news, especially with Sony skipping E3 this year. Yeah. And for, for Microsoft to be able to announce their new new generation of hardware unanswered mm-hmm. uh, is pretty crazy, especially considering just all of the the hard work and goodwill that they are building towards rebuilding with gamers after the tremendous loss from just the, dominating the, original... the 360 era to to, yeah. to just dropping the ball and shattering it. 
Mm -hmm. Like it didn't even bounce back. It just shattered into a million pieces. So now they got to piece it back together bit by bit. And honestly, they, they've glued that ball back together real well. Mm -hmm. Like they have built back so much uh, support from the community and they've, they've made like so many like consumer positive moves mm -hmm. uh, versus Sony who occasionally makes some consumer positive moves after being drugged, quick kicking and screaming. Yes. Uh, and yeah, I feel like the, the, they're basically going to do exactly what Microsoft did uh, with like the PS4 stuff. Cause that's like, this situation was completely reversed in the 360 PS3 era. Mm -hmm. So they killed it in the PS2. Yep. Way we're on top of the world. We can do whatever the hell we want. And then, yeah, the PS3 hit and like people will pay $700 for this console. Then they didn't. I mean, no. some of them did, just not as many as they wanted to. No, oh, yeah. Uh, and it wasn't a while before people started adopting the PS3. Like, they mm -hmm. had to drop the price to 400 before people would finally start getting it. Mm -hmm. uh, or no, it was 300 It was the 299 They released it with the Slim system, was then they finally started actually moving consoles. Because it was the... Because uh, it was because I had a PS3, but it was we bought it strictly for the Blu-ray player. Because it was the cheapest Blu-ray player with... Uh, or web-enabled Blu-ray player on the market. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know why that phrase was so hard for me to say that's ah, fine you've been around me i got there um but anyway yeah no it's it's they're just swapping again like and i feel like sony's gotten too comfortable and mm -hmm. at this point like with hardware lasting as long as it does like it's real it's not a good good idea to be dropping the ball right now man and i i will say too though like i feel like sony remembers ps3 so part of me thinks that they may not it may not be that hard that big of a fall like they will eventually kind of like, they are taking steps now to kind of ensure that that drastic of a drop doesn't happen. Mm. They are still making a lot of questionable uh, decisions, especially when it comes to crossplay. Yeah. Uh, because there was a – they talked about it on Kind of Funny the a couple weeks ago where it's like Sean Layden did an interview where he's like, no, we're, we totally support crossplay. You just have to ask your representative to get in the beta for crossplay, and it'll happen. Because he went on this huge, like – he did a big interview. I can't remember who it was, but – and then literally – that day, someone's like, okay, well, uh, I think it was Wargroove. We asked multiple times for crossplay and to be added, and we were outright told no. So, don't know what you're talking about. Which was a <laughs> they were kind just, of a little bit of a black eye on that little news cycle there. Yeah, but. they were basically just like, I boy, I hope nobody calls us on or calls us on this. Mm -hmm. Oh, they called us on it. Well, damn. Uh oh. Oops. But yeah, but now we got like Xbox is you know you have crossplay with PC, which of course because it's Microsoft. Yeah. But then also just how well they're working with Nintendo is yeah. amazing, especially considering Nintendo's history mm -hmm. of just like no no we're Nintendo. We we that's, keep our toys to ourselves. That's it. Yeah, like, and we don't care about whatever everyone else does. We're not trying to win the console wars. Mm -mm. We're just they putting just... out the stuff we want to put out. Yep. yep. And actually, that, that brings me to some of my next news first. Uh, uh, Reggie fils has retired, or is retiring, mm -hmm. from uh, president of Nintendo of America. Yep. Um, Doug Bowser stepping up, mm -hmm. which this was hilarious when he got a job working at Nintendo 15. of America. Uh, now it's even funnier that now Bowser... Is, is in charge um, of Nintendo. Is in charge of Nintendo of America. I, I really liked his picture when he first got hired of it, like in the office. And in the background on the shelf, Mario and Luigi were tied up with a GameCube controller. <laughs> <laughs> so, because he's just leaning into it because you have to. Well, and he should have also had but, Peach sitting on his desk. Now there's going to be a plucky guy from the mailroom <laughs> named Mario. <laughs> I'll get to the top someday. Now, somebody made the joke earlier today. It was like, man, Trump's president of the U.S., Bowser's, Bowser's president of, of Nintendo. Nintendo. <laughs> what a world we live in. But because he yeah, he got hired on back in 15, I think, and is like already been promoted like twice. Yeah. Um, yeah apparently he's a solid employee. Mm -hmm. Well, he's like he worked. He used to work for EA and a bunch of other companies, too. So he's like been he's been in the game a long, long time. Um, but it, like, it's going to be so hard to replace Reggie. Oh, yeah. Reggie was not only just like seemingly as an executive, like he did a good job. Like we're not into the nuts and bolts of like Nintendo's business, but looking at, you know, the success of the Wii to the recovery from the Wii U to the Switch mm -hmm. era. Uh, I don't know how much of that comes from the main Japanese office versus, like, what happens in America. But Reggie was always, he was the face of Nintendo. Yeah. You had Miyamoto, who, you know, is Miyamoto. Right. And then you have Reggie. Yeah. And Especially for, for us in the U.S., definitely. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, because Reggie was just that lovable face that we all got to see, like the mm-hmm. this lovable, awkward, huge nerd. He, yep. He he he's always like the uncle that wants you to think he's cool, uh-huh. <laughs> but like genuinely, but genuinely cares. And like his the the, yeah. the video that he posted, um, like announcing the retirement, like to the people, mm-hmm. was touching. It was super touching and like kind of, like weirdly emotional. Because, like, he isn't particularly, like, super charismatic, but he was, like, in his own way. Like, I don't know. It's just every time you saw him on stage, you could tell that he was actually happy to be there. Yeah, no, he like he he, he wasn't just phoning it in. Mm-hmm. Loved right. his job. Like, mm-hmm. you could tell this dude loved working for Nintendo. Like, he loved these Nintendo products. He was just, he just seems like a good dude. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, I'm going to miss him. Hopefully, it, uh, Dougie Bowser gets us taken care of, too. And it is a, I think it also is really, really nice that he's not leaving Nintendo because of some sort of scandal or because, yeah. he, like, he, he passed away or is, like, in bad health. Yeah, like, he even points out, out, he's just like, I want to spend some time. I want to spend time with my family. And yeah, I mean, he's almost 60. He's, he likely has more that money than, like, he has enough money for his family to last a few generations, I'm sure. Yeah. Like, well, and also the fact that, like, Whenever someone told me that he was like sixty, mm-hmm. I did not believe it. Man yeah, looks no, amazing. I would not believe that in uh, yeah. in a second. Yeah, uh, now he looks great for sixty. Mm-hmm. So, so that's super cool. Also, just to jump back real quick um, to touch on a couple other bits of the rumors for Google and Xbox. Mm-hmm. Um, apparently, Xbox Halo Infinite uh, is rumored to be a launch title for oh, yeah, the... the next the next round of consoles that they could be announcing at E3. And then with Google, no one really knows what that's going to be. They just kind of sent out that email about GDC. Uh, there's a lot of speculation that this could be a new console that could potentially even read discs uh, with its own controller, whatever. <coughs> it could just be a Chromecast-style thing you plug into your TV, and it is essentially a streaming service because earlier this winter, back in summer, no. Whenever they you had that, they t- tested out that streaming service with Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Yeah. Um, this could just be a streaming service that they're offering for games. Like the NVIDIA Shield kind of a situation. Type of, yeah. yeah. Um, that you just use with whatever controller you have at home already. Yep. Uh, this could be just a bunch of different things, so it's going to be really interesting to yeah, see I mean, what happens. It, it could just be new mobile games. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, no, it Which, could be... With some of the names, apparently, that have been hired by Google over the last few years, that would be very surprising. Yeah. I think it's going to be more towards the, the Shield type situation where you're just streaming your library of games to whatever without the need of an actual like disc machine reader you can just plug it into your tv would make sense too uh so yeah we'll uh, we'll definitely update you guys when we get uh, any kind of information about that uh all right and the uh, also just a little back on nintendo for a second get your grains of salt ready because this is it's, it's a big time rumor. Hopefully, you've had them ready the entire time. <laughs> Reggie's retiring. We know that for sure. Everything else we've talked about video games so far is just rumor, super rumor. Uh, but this is like super duper rumor, and you know, big if true kind of a situation. Uh, you know, we talked a little bit about a while back about like Xbox Live is hitting Switch. Mm-hmm. Uh, we don't know in what capacity, but we know that's happening. Um, uh, there's a big rumor coming that Xbox Game Pass is coming to Switch. Doubt it. Uh, yeah, I know. I do, too. But See, I just go back to that person coming into GameStop that wanted the Super Xbox 3. <laughs> <laughs> or, or the guy coming to GameStop, he wants, he wants uh, Halo for his Nintendo. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, uh, no, I need Mario on PS4. Uh-huh. No, Mar- yeah, <laughs> now the TV wouldn't lie to me. Um, <laughs> go to the, the what was that the the retail hell episodes for more information <laughs> on that story. Um, anyway, yeah, the, the big rumor is yeah, Game Pass is coming to the Switch, and Microsoft is actually working on ports of f- their their primary titles, Forza, Gears of War, Halo. Uh, they're also talking about bringing like Cuphead and uh, Ori over to the Switch. Well, in from what I saw, the Ori thing was because that's already just part of Game Pass. Mm-hmm. So Game Pass, so like, and it's this I isn't think like Cuphead your is too. Uh, I think it might be. I don't know, but uh, it's the. I'm trying to think of the way to to word this. It's not where you're actually like downloading and having. It's not the Switch running those games. It's it like would just streaming it. It, it would be streaming it, so you're just playing on that screen. You could, you know, um, so that could be really interesting. Yeah, if it, if it's true, it'd be kind of nuts. I it it wouldn't surprise me like as much as I think it might you guys by the sounds of it. But like, it'll be a really interesting t- to see the kind of relationship Microsoft and Nintendo 
are building and making because there's a lot of there are a lot of games like Rocket League is on Game Pass. So how does that work if you're playing it on you're playing it through your Game Pass account on your Switch and then you go into the store to buy a con- uh, like a, a new vehicle? Yeah, are you going through you the, pay- the Xbox store like the Nintendo one? Yeah. And yeah, that was uh, you know one of the big theories on what exactly Xbox Live is going to be doing on the Switch is for games with crossplay like mm-hmm. uh, the uh, Fortnite or uh, Rocket League or any of those kind of games so that you can match up with people on your Xbox friends list. Which, you know, would make sense, but yeah, like I said, we know we know nothing. This is a rumor. Apparently, Nintendo and Microsoft are in talks about something, mm-hmm. at least along these lines. I also feel like that's going to be, like, we're not going to hear anything about that official until E3. Right. Like, that's going to be their big, like, we get the, that, that's when you'll, we'll see the announcement of either, uh, if Reggie, I don't, I don't know when E3 is, so either, like, it might be Reggie, it might be Bowser at this point, um, is on the they take the stage during the Xbox presentation to announce oh oh by the way Steve from Minecraft is the new D- is going to be the next DLC character that comes out for Smash or Master Chief yeah or no. like this the Master Chief clothes the Master Chief Steve skin mm-hmm. from Minecraft cuz that's the big rumor too or vice versa where it's Phil Spencer shows, shows up, up on shows Nintendo. up at the Nintendo stage to announce Master Chief and Smash mm-hmm. that would be my new main just Master Chief. Boy. Doesn't matter how bad. Doesn't matter Would how you, bad it is. Does it does it count? The, does it does Steve wearing the the nope. the Spartan armor count? No, it does not. Okay. And I will not play that character. But what? It, but it's the Spartan armor. <laughs> but if it's Master Chief, like full on Master Chief. full on Master Chief, yeah. Like, what if it's Master Chief cosplaying as a Minecraft character? And stop them? asking me questions. If it's Master Chief, I'm playing it. <laughs> um, so, all right, we'll spend the last few minutes here uh, talking about Anthem because that's uh, that's dominated the news cycle in video games for this for the last. Several days, oh, actually, last like week because weeks. it, yeah, it, it, it hit early access uh, a week ago. Yeah, it was last, well, last Friday. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah, it hit uh, early access. So I mean, we played early access last Monday, mm-hmm. but yeah, it's been, so it's been available to most people uh, for over a week. It came out to the general public on Friday. Uh, Asa and I have already put about twenty five hours into the game, mm-hmm. not including like the early betas and demos. Right. Uh, yeah. No. Like. And basically everything you find on the internet, it's, it's one of three things. It's this game is atrocious, uh, tips on how to beat this part of the game, or why are you people enjoying this game? Mm-hmm. Because and then if you go to the Anthem subreddit, it's, this game's amazing. What's everybody talking about? Yeah. Like, <laughs> there, there are two pretty legitimate gripes about the game that are out there, and I, and I will confirm. Mm-hmm. The load times... Not great. They're atrocious. They are real bad. Apparently, this is part of the fix for the infinite load screens. So presumably, this is something they are working to fix. Mm -hmm. But they did this so that they would get rid of the infinite load screen so you actually could play the game. But even like Angry Joe posted, and I can't confirm that like it's I I didn't feel like it was this bad on Xbox, but he did a mission uh, where load screens were longer. Like he spent more time in load screens than he did actually playing the mission. Someone did a thing where it was like going from free play back to the forge to equip something to go back into free play was seven minutes. I feel like it wasn't that long when we did it. Uh, it was a long. It time. was a long time. Like don't get me wrong. Like I timed like, I the load were... screen a few times, mm-hmm. and uh, like I think on average the load screens are forty five seconds to a minute on the one X. Mm-hmm. But I look at that and I feel because I I would think that on my PC it would be significantly quicker. Like it should. There should be a well, apparently difference. Apparently, they're load actually time. worse on PC. That's yeah, and that's what I've heard. Like my like my load times are on par on PC with like I've got a really nice solid state hard drive. Ben's got an even better one, mm-hmm. and the load times are right around equal. Yeah, uh, on PC versus Xbox, at least the One X. I can't speak about the One S. I don't know because everybody I know that's been playing it has been playing it on a One X. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, I which leads me to believe that it is something like server side that's causing it, mm-hmm. like something that they are actively doing to. Uh, like I said, mitigate that infinite load screen. Because I feel like back in the beta, and I, I AC, you can confirm or deny this because I don't remember completely. I might just be making this up. But like whenever we got load times, the, what we're experiencing now, mm-hmm. if I like the way I remember it, that was when we were sure that we were going to get hit with an infinite load screen. Otherwise, the load screens weren't that bad. Uh, I honestly don't really remember. I just remember 
keeping track of the jump and then if it stopped at you know that 95 percent mm-hmm. or if it inched up to that 95 percent we were going to get stuck on it yeah because i so I, I don't I, remember the i remember the load screens being a, like very long when they even when they did work but because that's been an issue since the beta yeah and it is one that hasn't necessarily been well yeah like i said i just remember like whenever it I distinctly remember saying, like, oh, this is taking too long. We're probably about to get hit with an infinite. Yeah. Because uh, I remember that phrase, say, like, happening. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, I would inch up to the 95 mark and then just stop. We'd have to restart the game, go back in. Yep. Which was a pain. So, yeah, no, the load screen's a legitimate gripe. I Hopefully they're working on it, and it won't be so bad, and, like, in the coming months. And it's a bummer, too, because it's all, like, just the same still image. So, like, when they already give you the the animation of your javelin, like being assembled or whatever like that like, like yeah you're why getting isn't that part of the prepared. load screen or yeah. someone on reddit even posted like hey why don't you just put codex entries oh, that would on be there awesome. instead of just the same the... five tips and yeah. background oh here's a picture of a scar yep sure is which took me a while to actually see like the anatomy of the scar i was like man that thing's face looks real weird and they're mm-hmm. like oh no it's a bug yeah <laughs> i get it now <laughs> Uh, that makes the so many things that so many of the voice lines make a lot more sense. <laughs> uh, but anyway, you know, like outside of the load times, like the mission structure can be a little wonky, and I didn't really realize that it was like the reason it was wonky until we were playing with Dalton, and uh, Dalton's trying to catch up with me and Asa, so he's not really like paying much attention to the story or what's going on. He's kind of pressing A to skip through because he just wants to play with us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which yeah, completely fair. Um, so like at that, like he got to points where he's like, I have no idea where to go. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I distinctly remember, like, you know, in the voice lines, it told you, oh, yeah, you just go talk to this guy. Yeah, mm-hmm. but there's no, like, text after that. Right. Like, yeah, they, there's nothing that, uh, like, if you just skipped all that storyline or all that story information, like, the, the dialogue, like, I could see you getting lost pretty easy. And that is a problem. I mean, there's a, they usually have the marker. Right. But that the marker to follow. for, like, that situation, like, the Dalton situation in particular, mm-hmm. uh, Yarrow didn't have a different marker on him. Yeah. There wasn't a marker. Uh, or, like, there was a marker, but it was just, like, a voice bubble. Marker. Yeah. It was, oh, it was like, bubbles. just someone you can, you can go talk to this yeah, person. Yeah. It wasn't, like, a glowing oh, okay. red, hey, go here, dum dum. Yeah. Because it's it like, was... Tana says, go talk to Yarrow, yeah. like, in the voice line. So, yeah, there's there's a ton of people. Like, if you went and talked to everybody, eventually mm-hmm. you'd hit Yarrow, which is what me and Asa did. But we knew, like, from, like, listening to Tannis or whatever her name is. I think her name is Tannis. Mm-hmm. Uh, listening to Tannis talk, we like, Tannis was like, go talk to Yarrow. So we talked to Yarrow. We got our next mission. We played it, whatever, and we moved on. And then, yeah, like, I remember and I the exact same thing happened when I was playing with Kevin. Kevin was just kind of skipping through the dialogue. Mm-hmm. And then uh, he was like, I have no idea where to go right now. I was like, yeah, go talk to Yarrow. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure. And he's like, who's Yarrow? Bald guy down the stairs. Russian guy. And then, yeah, we did some quests and, you know, we got it taken care of. But, yeah, no, like it, the mission structure is a little wonky because it's not as straightforward as like your World of Warcraft or anything like that mm-hmm. where you just like there's I the mean, exclamation point over their head. You go talk to that go person. Talk to me. Yeah. But and at the same time, like that beacon. is that is part of the game, though, is they want you to be immersed in that world. They yeah. want you to know, like. And I'm not one to defend, like, a developer saying this is how you should play the game. But it's a Bioware game, so you kind of need to expect it. Yeah, because, I mean, I even saw, like, one of the articles I saw that I really agreed with was, like, Bioware delivers yet another game where we have characters that we would die for. Just kidding, but, you know, not really. (laughs) (laughs) Because, like, I love Owen with all of my heart. (laughs) Like, he's he's a wonderful little person. Like, all of these storylines I'm interested in. Mm -hmm. And, like, yeah, they put a lot of work into it and a lot of effort into it. And, yeah, like, I agree that, uh, you know, you should be, like, paying attention to the stuff. They put a lot of work into it, and it's actually really well done. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, like, yeah, I'm with Asa. Like, I'm not going to tell you how to enjoy a game. Right. So, you know, play it however you want. Like, it's a looter shooter, and people basically are wanting, like, they just want to go out, kill stuff, and get stuff. Mm -hmm. Which is fine. Like, go do that. But then, yeah, they have trouble advancing in the story because they're just like, skip, 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 skip. The only other com- real complaints that I have with the game are it doesn't do a good enough job of explaining its mechanics at all. Especially the- outside of the Ranger. Uh, if you're In terms of, like, class, like how they play? No, I or- mean, like, when you get a new piece of gear and it has all those little, like, plus percentage to this buff, like, with the little symbols... Don't know what the symbols mean. Um, it doesn't explain like primers and detonators at all. You just kind of that's inform. I know what they are because I've been excited for this game for months and have been watching YouTube videos where they explain it like with the developers. But there's mm-hmm. nothing in the game 
to d say like, hey, so this thing primes the enemies, like so you cover them in acid and they start burning away, and then your left bumper ability explodes it and causes a combo with lightning type deal. It just tells you this is a primer, this is a detonator. What do those do? Figure it out. And it's not hard to figure out, at least that part of it. Yeah, because like, at least like most of the gameplay, like one of the things that I, that I will give this game a whole lot of credit for, pretty much everything feels extremely intuitive. Mm -hmm. There's some weird like word choices and stuff that go on. Like a lot of the stuff about recharge rate, I'm not completely positive what that's like. It, you know, reduces, your re it reduces the recharge rate. Okay, so does that mean it makes my recharge rate faster or does it reduce? Well, it reduces the recharge rate percentage. Oh, yeah. Uh, so does like it recharge twenty percent faster, or does it? Or does it? Do I have like, to wait twenty percent longer before it recharges? Yeah, it, like it's not completely co uh, completely clear on that stuff, but yeah, I mean, it's still like like I said, most of the game, like the flying especially, mm -hmm. uh, like that that part of my review anyway, stays true to what I was talking about with like the early access and the betas. Like it's it feels flying, phenomenal. Yeah, flying is super fun. Gunplay feels awesome. Anytime you use an ability, you feel like some sort of like crazy, awesome action superstar hero. Depending on the ability, because there are some abilities that are just empirically better than others. True. Um, I don't the know ultimate why. Abilities. I don't understand why they included any abilities that aren't either a primer or a detonator. That blows my mind. Yeah, because they uh, they have other advantages and stuff, but but yeah. your combos are where you're doing your most damage. Mm -hmm. So, um, and the only I wish there was a little bit more mission type variety. Because it's pretty much everything is either go go to this place, kill this wave of enemies, go to this place, kill this wave of enemies, go to this place, kill this wave of enemies. Or go to this place, grab the orbs, deliver the orbs, repeat. Or my least favorite, go to this place, stand in this circle yeah, for an amount of time. Hey, we're giving you an Iron Man armor that you can fly around and do awesome stuff with. But don't do that. We need you to be in this radius. So that you can charge the signal. And if your general random, like, teammate decides, I want to go run around and get all the kills, then it takes even longer because it, the speed in which you have to, the length of time you have to stay in the circle goes down a lot if all four of you are in the circle. Yeah. yeah. But if two people decide to just wander off on their own, it's literally half the time. Yep. Yeah. Sheesh. So, you yeah, know, there, there are definitely some improvements that the game could have. That said, like I said, Ace and I put 25 hours mm. in the game, not counting the... Also waypoints. How are there no waypoints in oh, free play? Oh, yeah. Like, it changes your, your drop-off in free play, at least. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, no, the waypoint system's kind of bad. There is, in, in that it's non-existent. Yeah. You have to pull up the map. Okay, I have to go southeast. And then just go southeast and hope that you... <laughs> Pat, you went on the right side of the cliff. Yep. All right, Dalton. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you about Anthem real quick. Go ahead and give your experiences. Dalton jumped into this game with us, like, uh, Friday Thursday. night. Thursday night. Or Thursday night, yeah. I've, so I've put, like, three hours into it. I really like it, but, like, yeah, I know the whole... And it would be different if I, like, started with you guys, but I'm not really super worried about the story as much as I just want to be in an Iron Man suit and wreck <laughs> stuff. Because, like, I don't I don't care about storylines. Like, Borderlands, one was storyline, so it was just, like, just kill a bunch it of stuff. It had a storyline. It just wasn't a particularly deep storyline. All right, so I like shallow storylines, <laughs> especially and means Kingdom just... Hearts three. <laughs> <laughs> he wants his storylines really shallow, mm -hmm. or gets stuck in a web. Like he wants to go so deep mm. down that hole, there's no coming back. It's I'm a unique individual, but I really like the. I think the gameplay is a lot of fun. Um, the way they do, they don't really describe a lot to you because that's the whole thing. Like there was, I like played for like two hours, and Jesse's like, "Oh, press jump in your attack button." You'd be a little Beyblade of Doom, like. And then Dalton jumped. He's like, "Oh, that was awesome!" Like, yeah, right. And then I became Troy from Community. I was like, <laughs> "I dare you find me traversing this world not doing that." <laughs> I challenge you. Uh, yeah. Uh, so no, but I I will keep playing it. Like it's really fun. Uh, it's a beautiful game. I want to get my javelin to not look dirty. So like I at least need to get to level eight. I think uh, it's like level twelve. Oh well, that's unfortunate for me. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's a lot of fun. I like it a lot. Good. So yeah, definitely. Uh, uh, there's no real excuse not to at least try this game, because you can get a month of EA access for five bucks. I need to cancel my EA access. Yeah. Uh, my unfortunately, I don't have to because mine was part of the free trial. Uh, yeah. No, the, you can get a month of EA access for five bucks, and that gives you ten hours of gameplay uh, on Xbox. Obviously, PlayStation it doesn't really help you with. So yeah, for PlayStation people, I'm really sorry. Uh, and PC, fifteen bucks, you get the whole game for that entire month. 
So for an entire month, you get full access to the full game for fifteen dollars. So unlimited time. Yeah, unlimited okay. time on PC. Uh, but again, fifteen versus five. Mm-hmm. So yeah, no, there's there's like I said, no reason not to at least give the game a shot. And it's not even a real big download, and it is mm-hmm. super fun. Like and they I, have a they have a really extensive post launch uh, roadmap roadmap yeah. of of content they're putting out for free. Um, Because that's yeah, definitely my favorite part of it. We already have like at least five DLC packs dropping mm -hmm. in the next uh, two years for free. Yeah, and like also, it feels kind of feels like the. um, I I feel like we're earning coins at a pretty solid rate. Like we've already earned probably more than forty thousand. Yeah, for a full set of armor, it's usually it's about sixty one thousand for like the the epic, yeah, uh, the epic quality armor sets. I'm sure the economy is going to change. Uh, so that might you know get nerfed a little bit, but I, I feel like we're earning that at a pretty decent clip, uh, especially because they have this thing where the more friend like the the it you earn alliance bonus for coins every week. So the more like you have five your top five friends who play the game online or who who play the game, they as their tier increase goes up, then that increases the amount of coins you get from them. Yep. So your top five friends are essentially earning you coins, and you're earning coins for your friends as well. So that's like, which is a super cool feature, I think. Yes. And when you play with friends, you earn extra of that. So, yeah, and I don't think there's anything in the store that uh, you can't get with just coins. Everything is either shards or coins, yep. and you can buy. And there's not one that's exclusive to the other. That's one I'm willing to bet will change uh, within probably the first year or so. Yeah, because I know like they mentioned that if they ever release any more javelins, that will be the one thing that they charge for, like the one mm-hmm. piece of content. So that'll probably be something that you won't be able to use coins or anything on. Like yeah. you'll have to use. Shards, shards or just pay straight up like DLC style. I don't know if this is true, but someone I'd, I'd heard somewhere that if you have you know X amount of shards and it's not enough to buy you know an emote or something, you can actually make up that cost in coins. Oh, that's cool too. So, so. The, like it gets that kind of mitigates the predatory nature of you um, have you can't buy seven dollars and fifty cents worth of shards. You either have to buy five or ten, and, and everything costs seven fifty. Yep, gotcha. Which is yeah, super shady. But if that's true, which again I can't verify that. Because I haven't spent any, I haven't put any money into the game, but yeah, no, that's they, a, that's a neat workaround to that. Yeah, no, that that's kind of cool. Because yeah, that's they got twenty dollars extra out of me in the because uh, I bought the Legion of Dawn and everybody at the table minus Lindsay mm-hmm. did. But Shannon uh, did. Shannon did too. Yeah. Fair uh, enough. It still came out of my bank account. It did. <laughs> so Lindsay did buy the Legion of Dawn. <laughs> well, everybody uh, at this table. <laughs> it's fine. All right. That's going to do it for our show. Definitely check out Anthem, guys. It legitimately is a lot of fun. I know the internet's been hating on it hard. Mm-hmm. Uh, but but a lot of those people also are just like, there's no endgame content. I've already put 90 hours into the game, and I'm bored. You it's put 90 been hours like into, a week. Yeah, you put 90 hours into something that's been out for you know a week, maybe two, if you have the... Did you shower? The origins. <laughs> yeah. Did you eat? They didn't, and have they did. Have you slept? <laughs> so, yeah, Probably not. If you don't go super... If you're not going like crazy hardcore into it, like we kind of almost borderline did, because even Dalton was like, man, I feel bad that you guys can't progress in the story. And we're like, please don't, because it's probably not a bad thing that we have to take a break from progressing, because this is one I kind of want to take my time with. Yeah. Like, I might jump, I might jump on a little bit tonight uh, when I get home just to screw around in free play but because this was one of those things like i was playing with kevin he had, he had kind of the same thing he's like i could just jump in with you and you know you can keep going with your story stuff like no no back up we'll, we'll progress we're, you we're, 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 i'll get you up to me like <laughs> it's fine uh i still get because i got several epic items just playing with kevin like in the intro missions mm-hmm. and it does scale you down so it's not like i'm it's not like world of warcraft where i'm just like or diablo where i'm like this marching like death parade of, of death well i mean wow has changed that as well yeah, that's true. They did start. They did change a lot. But like of the Destiny stuff. was like that, where it's like if I'm if Jesse's trying to get me caught up to him, uh-huh. it's pretty much he's babysitting me yep. and yep. carrying. Me. It's like okay, well, oh, I'm down. It doesn't matter because I'm yeah. doing. I'm throwing pebbles mm-hmm. at these space monsters and. Yep. Versus yeah, this game like so everything this, scales. It actually, yeah, yeah, it you, actually weakens you. It brings you down yep. to their level, which I think is a genius move. Mm-hmm. And I know they're not the first ones to do it, but I, that's my favorite way of doing it is to yeah. make everyone feel balanced, especially because there is no PvP. Mm-hmm. And like on top of that, like I said, you still I I did a mission with Dalton. Mm-hmm. Uh, like oh, after yeah, you, you got left, your mastercraft, and I got a, I got another masterwork. Mm-hmm. Uh, which yeah, like it's you can still get like the same kind of loot that you would get 
Like obviously, you, you, there's probably more chances for better loot at the higher levels. Mm -hmm. But yeah, if you want, if you have a friend that's you know only level one or something like that, well, they would have to be level three, I guess, before you can join in with them. Regardless, I was like you level can, six. You can jump in with them mm -hmm. and play with them, and you can still get rewards and stuff for it. Even the experience is still pretty decent. Yeah, like yeah, it's it's fine. Like there, it it doesn't feel like a waste of time to be helping your friends. Which is so, a great, which is a great way of doing it. Yeah, because that makes your friends that you're helping not feel like crap because they're just dragging you down, uh, or like it doesn't make you feel like crap because like, well, I'm, I, you know, I could be like, you know, furthering my character. You're doing both, <laughs> and also they don't feel completely useless playing, yeah. you know, playing. It's because yeah. that's the thing that I hated about Destiny so much is it's just like I there's no point in me even playing right now. Like I should just put down my controller, and let you finish the mission. Yeah, definitely. In that one, yeah, that one part when we started getting going, mm -hmm. that was bad. So anyway. Uh, give that game a shot, guys. Uh, we're going to head out of here, and we'll talk to you next time. Thank you for tuning in, and uh, yeah, see you guys later.